What's up, Diecast Collectors? This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy. Today we're going to bring you guys a uh, very uh, <laughs> uh, interesting Diecast review, as this is actually, hopefully this one won't make you guys quite hungry, because if you guys saw my Oreo Ritz review of this guy, um, a lot of people were actually hungry during that review, so hopefully this one will... Uh, Get your taste buds up in attention because today we're going to be reviewing the guy who won the 2009 Coke Zero 400 race at Daytona. And yes, that's the car we're reviewing, guys. It is Tony Stewart's 2009 Burger King Chevrolet Impala SS4 Stewart Haas Racing. This is a car that, if you guys know, I picked up at my at my trip to o Oseb Race Collectibles, which I'll probably make another trip coming down in August, uh, since, you know, um, it's been a pretty rough weekend so far for me, so I definitely uh, need to start collecting more diecasts to um <laughs> to, to, to time to make me feel better because you know um yeah the last few days have been kind of rough so um but i just want to thank you guys just for your continued support of this channel guys and i can tell you what guys even though i got demonetized um this channel is still gonna be rock and rolling with the diecast views because uh heck i'm still gonna provide you guys entertainment um regardless if i make a dime or not on youtube but that's all that matters guys but anyways guys love the packaging on this box it is pretty plain jane ironically we don't have the bird king logo on this anywhere on the diecast or uh, well on the diecast videos you can see all the bk logos um but not on the box which is a little disappointing but i still like the creativity they put in this box even if it's like different colors um probably missing some yellow and then other than that it pretty much looks complete but anyways, guys, let's go ahead and kick off this diecast review and the unboxing of the Tony Stewart 2009 Burger King car. As well, let's get it on right now. Alrighty, you bunch of whoppers, we got this diecast out of its box and <laughs> okay, that was a stupid intro. I will say that, but uh, as you know, it's a Burger King car, you know, home of the whopper. But yeah, what a uh, very unique looking paint scheme, guys. I mean, uh, of all the drivers that had to sponsor uh, Burger King, it had to be um, the, the heaviest of them all, which is Tony Stewart. I mean, it was going to be Stewart or Ryan Newman, but, um, you know, I, I'm not, you know, criticizing Tony Stewart's weight, but I, just, I find it kind of funny that, you know, last year, the year before, he sponsored Subway, and then he uh, <laughs> sponsored Burger King. I mean, that's kind of out of the blue. But at the time, we at, at at the time, guys, I understand Subway is not healthy anymore. But at the time, Subway was considered kind of healthy because you know Carl Levers was sponsoring them. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I just find that kind of funny, guys. But um, yeah, guys, I mean, uh, sadly, just like the quality of Burger King, guys, the quality of Tony Stewart's has gone downhill as well. I mean, as you guys know, Tails Levin was his last competitive season, and then he kind of slowed down after that. But who can remember this race, guys? I think the only people out there who do not want to remember this race are the Kyle Busch fans, because Kyle Busch came so close to winning his first win at Daytona in the Cup Series, and then Tony Stewart said, uh-uh, not today, son, and uh, unfortunately moved him out of the way, and Kyle Busch unfortunately got in a pretty bad accident. I mean, I never actually wanted to see that. I mean, I know there's a lot of people there who are not a big fan of Kyle Busch, but seeing that accident was kind of scary. Um... But yeah, Tony Stewart, man, got managed to get it done and got the only time he 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 only won in this. Uh, well, let's just say this is the only time we've seen Burger King won with Stuart Haas and Tony Stewart because he did ran the Burger King scheme three years in a row from 2009, 2010, and 2011. And to be honest with you guys, this is actually not my favorite Burger King car, guys. I remember his 2010 one, which is just like this, but instead of these little waves we got, we have flames. And I'm like, that is perfect because, you know, as you know, Burger King is known for their flame broiled burgers, so it's only appropriate to add the flames on the car. I mean, I know a lot of people are saying, nobody could do the flames better than Jeff Gordon. Well, Tony Stewart did in 2010, and it looked awesome. And then in 2011, they decided to invert the colors and decided to go with this mustard-looking yellow, which is basically the yellow, that, that this yellowish, dandelion yellow, mustard yellow that they use on the logo. They used that instead, and it turned into one of the worst looking schemes ever. So that's how I rank the Burger King schemes. This is a good second. The 2010 one is first, and 2011 is third. But yeah, I mean, uh, ironically, uh, his 2010 one, he finished the worst in, which was like 25th. He won in this car in 2009, and I believe he finished 11th in the 2011 one. So kind of ironic right there. But it was a nice little fun sponsorship while it lasted, because we did get ourselves a quite hilarious uh, commercial slash video. Uh, if you guys saw that video of Tony Stewart working at Burger King, uh, that that was so freaking funny, man. That that was that was when you know, uh, you know commercials and marketing was so fun, and nobody was like butt hurt of what they had to put on nowadays on TV. I mean, 
Good times, man. Good times when we had good quality NASCAR commercials. When the commercials actually meant something instead of just some stupid cynical commercials with the COPD and all that bullshit. But, <laughs> I mean, that stuff's no joke, but just how many times like, I can see that commercial, for Christ's sakes. Um, but, anyways, enough of me talking and ranting about commercials. I'll probably save that for another day for reviews. But... Very awesome looking paint scheme, even though it is kind of all over the place. And I probably the only thing I don't like about this paint scheme is how off centered the have it your way is on this. I mean, um, you can almost, I mean, especially if the car is like face inside, you can barely even see it. So I'm glad they changed it up for 2010. But this one actually doesn't look too bad uh, for the COT guys. And this car is very glossy. I mean, majority of the 2009 cars that I've seen and collected, I'm wearing gloves, guys, but this thing is slick, man. It's almost like slipping on a slippery, slippery floor, guys. Um, like someone just like uh, put on a whole thing of like pine saw over this car because it is, it feels good in the hand. All right. That's all I'm going to say right there. No sexual puns intended, but it, it does feel really nice. I will say that. Um, uh, but my God, guys, I mean, the 2009, man, Tony Stewart had so many great looking paint schemes. Uh, if you guys know, I already reviewed his Swagger car, and then I'm going to review his Back to School car, which, you know, that'd probably be a cool car to review. It's probably one of my most favorite die cast ever. Um, and a little fun fact, guys, if you guys remember, in 2009, I took a break from NASCAR, and then back in 2010, I got back right into NASCAR. And you wonder why I got back into NASCAR? Well, it was with Winter Circles, and the first two die casts I picked up when I got back to NASCAR in 2010 was... The 2010 Burger King car from um, Tony Stewart and the Mark Martin uh, GoDaddy car. Those are the first two diecasts I picked up after my one-year hiatus of watching NASCAR. So this car definitely has a lot of great memories for me. Um, there's no diecast collecting is what got me into NASCAR. Uh, the racing is good too, but I love me some diecast, guys. And this one right here is no exception. I don't have a diecast to compare to this, guys. Uh, we do, um, I was about to say, are there paint chips on this car? But no, there is. Look at the added detail, guys. They even got the logos underneath the rear wing, which that is pretty cool. Office Depot and Old Spice. Wouldn't mind see Burger King return as a sponsor for NASCAR. I mean, I know they did with BK Racing, but that was such a iffy sponsorship, especially with that whole team going under. Um, but yeah, guys, feel free to comment below, guys. Uh, what was your favorite memory from the Burger King or your favorite memory in general when it comes to Burger King sponsoring NASCAR? Um, I know I, I definitely love that Tony Stewart ad they did, him working at Burger King. I mean, that was freaking hilarious. Um, <laughs> if you guys haven't seen that commercial, look it up. It is quite funny, and then come back and comment of just how funny that is. But uh, if we comment below, I mean, just for the shits and giggles, since we're talking about Burger King, what's your favorite item uh, on Burger King, guys? Or if there's an item that you liked that they don't have anymore, feel free to comment below. I'm... Firstly, myself, I'm a big fan of their chicken fries. I will say that. I mean, that's one thing I do like about Burger King. I mean, there's no other place that has chicken fries. So, yeah. Racing 2011 can agree with me, agree with me on that. <laughs> um... Anyways, guys, this has been OBB, the Diecast News Guy. Thank you so much for watching this Diecast view of the Tony Stewart 2009 Burger King Chevrolet Impala SS for Stewart Haas Racing. If you guys enjoyed this Diecast review, along with other NASCAR Diecast reviews, especially for the COTs, um, feel, free to, feel free to subscribe if you guys haven't already because I do got I do got a lot more Diecast reviews to film for you guys in the not-so-distant future. So I'm going to go ahead and head off for now and get started on some more Diecast reviews for you guys. This has been OBB, the Diecast News Guy.